please, uh, I want to acknowledge and also give a hand to two of my colleagues that are here today, Judge Sherman and Judge Sweeney. These are my mentors, these are my rabbis, and they've taught me everything that I'm doing today, and I hope correctly. Let me quote two of history's great minds. One is Maimonides, one of Judaism's greatest philosophers and codifiers of the law. The second is Justice Todd Stewart of our Supreme Court. Maimonides wrote in his 12th century prayer for physicians, You have endowed man with wisdom to relieve the suffering of his brothers, to recognize their disorders, to discover their powers, and apply them to soothe their new will ill. Justice Stewart wrote in the year 2000 about the paramount importance of what he called the nation's confidence of the judge as an impartial guardian of the rule of law. To me, it is clear that a judge must combine both these principles. He must seek the wisdom to relieve the suffering of the litigant who stands before him and apply the law to sue them he ill. However, a judge must never forget that the people must have confidence as an impartial guardian of the law. If he can help the person suffering while preserving the confidence in him, and his colleagues as fair and impartial, then he has served the country, the litigant, and the defendant. Ultimately, the, uh, though he ensured the survival of our country as a nation of war and not men. In America, we may, people may feel that a judge may make a mistake, even arguing that the Supreme Court got the Constitution wrong. But we accept the rulings of our courts because we trust them. A TV replay may prove that a referee or an umpire may, may make a wrong call, but does not impugn the integrity of the game. Fans are ready to forgive the mistake because they believe that the umpire is honest. Otherwise, we have the kind of soccer riots we read about in the third world countries. Public confidence in the courts is a priceless national asset that judges must preserve. When I was elected to the bench, I realized there's an element of our society that feels that the legal system is stacked against them. Not because they doubt the integrity of the judges, but because they feel disenfranchised by the helplessness of the fight, the attorneys or corporations and credit card companies. Those lawyers are simply doing their job. But if a bewildered debtor cannot mount his own defense, they cannot afford legal assistance feels powerless against the system. It became clear to me that the Talmud states, in a place where there's no man, you must endeavor to be a man. The function of the court is not to step aside when justice is not being done. The judge must pursue justice, and if someone is helpless, the judge must assist him and not to aid an underdog if he's wrong, but to support him if he's right. I have took the responsibility. It is gratifying, if unusual, that the media took notice of the these indigenous in my field that I have done. I treasure the times when I dismissed a credit card claim because there was sufficient evidence. The defendant did not understand what happened in this brief. He asked, What do I have to do now? Do I have to come back to court? I said, No, go home and celebrate. Mark Twain said, Always do the right thing. Some people will be gratified and the rest will be astonished. I want to share with you something. A story that happened to me many, many years ago when I was city councilman. And it talks to, to the theme of doing the right thing. I also want to acknowledge the work of Dror. Because if the Dror would have been around when I had this issue many years ago, this would have never happened. You are fortunate to have young people, and I call them Rabbi Stein's Hasidim, who have dedicated themselves to the legal system, to the criminal justice system. 
I've never seen people like this. People who understand. It just amazes me. You know, when the media looks at the Hasidic community, looks at the Barbara, Williamsburg, the entire Jewish community around the state, around the country, they look, they try to take us, make us a different group that is knowledgeable. But when you have here attorneys, you just saw him, the very esteemed attorney Jacob Lauer. You have the head of legal aid, Steve Banks here. And you have other attorneys, other people in law enforcement. It just amazes me. Because when I started many years ago, this wasn't so. And I want to share with you something. And I want this story that you should take home and think about. Many years ago, sitting in my council office, and two distraught women from the community came by, came into the, the, the office. I heard them crying to my assistant, and I ran out of the office and said, what's going on? And they said that husbands, two people who attend Colel, who study all day, rabbinic students, were just arrested on a 6-6 precinct. They were arrested, but accused of a crime which they did not commit. And of course, everybody comes up with that story, and everybody knows that. Everybody's innocent. But listening to their story, I saw something was wrong. There was someone in their building who, some people decided to take justice in their own hands, and he, this gentleman decided that he had to get back at somebody, so he accused two people in his building, because he recognized them, that they, he beat them up. Now, the cops say, what can I do? We have a complaint, there's nothing we can do. And of course, the community activists were all involved, and they all said, don't worry. You'll get down to such a booking, you'll be arraigned, and you'll appear before a judge and everything will be dismissed. And I said to myself, why? Why should they go through the system, being handcuffed, being led away by a police car into a court system among people that they did not commit a crime? And I believed their story. And I went to the first stop, I went to the captain. The captain told me, what could I do? There was an accusation. We have to go through it. Don't worry. The courts will dismiss it. I said, that's unfair. You have an obligation to do a thorough investigation if it's true. I wasn't satisfied. I went to the borough chief, and the borough chief gave me the same story. And I said, I'm not going to stop there. And I went to the chief of the department. And I said to him, this is unfair. Someone was wrongfully arrested, and you should let them loose. How could I do that? I said, do it with an investigation. You don't have to do it. Within one hour, these people, these two young gentlemen were released. Now I want you to know Stetson. Had Tor been around that time, a lot of people would have sprung into action. Things would have been different. And I tell you this, those who are on the law enforcement side, prosecution side, defense side, and people in the community. When you do the right thing, it always ends up in the right way. And I told this chief, and I tell this to everybody else, we have a higher authority that we have in Asia too. And when I told this chief that you would be blessed for doing the right thing, because he went beyond the call of duty, he didn't have to do this. He could have left it to the justice, criminal justice system to adjudicate the case. But he says, if the wrong is done, we have to undo it. And as a result, this gentleman today, this chief of the department today, is the longest serving chief of the history of the police New York City Police Department. Remember, always do the right thing and always support the people that do the right thing. Thank you.